Hello there! If you're passionate about brow products, there's a pretty good chance you might have heard about Refi recently. Refi Beauty was founded in November 2020 by British influencer Jess Hunt, a blonde, bronzed, bushy-browed bombshell basically. She's beautiful. I hadn't come across Jess before, but friends in the UK said she wasn't necessarily known for beauty content specifically, but she has a signature look and cleverly captured elements of her style by launching brow products and a recent summer skin collection. After just six months on the market, Refai launched online at Sephora in June and at Selfridges just last week in store and online. I picked up the brow collection in medium, cream bronzer in sand, and cream blush in Malaya and Citrine. I've been playing with a bunch of different brow products this year, waxes, gels, pomades, pencils, but one particular Refi review that really sold me was from British beauty journalist Ava Welsing Kitcher. I interviewed Ava for a little online beauty conversation series I started earlier in the year, which I'm hoping to turn into a potential proper podcast in 2022. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Ava raved about Refi during our chat. The branding is in line with a lot of super simple, minimal packaging on the market at the moment, but this is bare to the point of being a bit inconvenient because there's no product information, not even the product name, you just get a shade sticker on the back. Even the brow products just have the shade, but you will get used to spotting which stick does what quite quickly. We have to begin with the brow collection. Jess Hunt is blessed with Vogue cover brows to begin with. I have quite dark full brows too, but her tutorials show how much of a difference these products make, even if you do have a bit more brow to play with. It's a three-stage process, brow sculpt, pomade and pencil to really lift, shape and strengthen your brows. Each product is double-ended, love that design detail, with built-in tools so you don't need anything else. Stage 1 – Brow Sculpt to shape and set. This is the most important step for a bushy, brushed up brow. Sculpt has a long spoolie with a formula Jess describes as a mix between a wax, a gel and a glue. It's white but dries clear and definitely has the strongest hold I've ever seen. Like a brow wax with easier application. It doesn't feel too crunchy or stuck down but it's not going to move either. After applying the formula, you pull the lid off to reveal the comb and brush. Took me far too long to realise that's where they were hiding. The comb creates a real lifted, laminated look. The formula does set quite quickly, so I prefer to shape one brow at a time. After the comb, the brush is designed to press down hairs and pick up any formula residue. I noticed a little bit of flaking during this step. Kaki mentioned this in her review too. It might be dry skin under your brows that never sees the light of day, or the formula flaking a bit, but that's what the brush is meant to do. Catch the excess so you can see a bit sitting on the surface there. Jess just says to clean the comb and brush with hot water. I actually prefer to change the order and use this sculpt step last after shading in my brows with the rest of the trio or a brow pencil like the Charlotte Tilbury brow lift I love. I heard Hannah Louise's review that it feels like other products can get a bit stuck in the gel or make it pill once it's hardened, so I've had better results using this last, which is what I do anyway. Brow pencil first, brow gel last. Love the lift this step creates. Stage 2 – Brow Pomade to add depth and colour in light, medium or dark. There's an angled brush to shade and add fullness where you need it, and the little pomade pot is at the other end. Jess wanted to make this really creamy so it doesn't dry out quickly like other formulas, and you only need a very small amount, removing the excess is important. I do find the angled brush and deep pot a little bit awkward, the tip of the brush hits the pomade but not really the rest, so the product can get pretty messy around the pot, but once you've removed the excess it does go on very smoothly. Stage 3 – Brow Pencil to add light, medium or dark brow hair strokes. This pencil has a tiny tip, it's so fine you're not meant to use it with more than 2mm twisted up. This is designed to neatly fill in any gaps and it's also fine enough to dot on freckles if you fancy it. There's a spoolie at the other end that's meant to blend all of the products together for a natural finish, but I find it can interfere with the sculpt formula a bit as I mentioned earlier, so I'd rather change up the order and use the pomade, pencil, then spoolie to soften the colour, then the sculpt formula, comb and brush to shape. In June, Jess Hunt released the Refi Summer Skin Collection with a cream bronzer, blush and highlighter. 
I skipped the gloss highlighter, but you can see some of my favourite formulas in a recent bronze and glow video. This launch was all about embracing your natural beauty and seeing your skin, not hiding it. Love that message. Even though I apply bronzer before blush, I wanted to talk about these babies first. Refai's Cream Blush comes in three shades and is described as a unique cream-based blush that delivers highly pigmented, buildable coverage. I'm always intrigued by new cream formulas, so I wanted to put these compacts through their paces, but I wouldn't say they meet that unique claim. They're nice, and if they help Jess's audience embrace their skin and get into creamy products, that's great. But if you're already a cream blush lover, you probably own something like this already. They have a fairly firm feel, like Stila Convertible Color or Honest Beauty Cream Blush, so it's not a really slippy, soft texture. There's a bit more resistance on the surface. I was quite surprised by how tiny these are, like eyeshadows, and they're pretty pricey for such a petite amount of product. To give you an idea, Rare Beauty's Dewy Blush Bottles are the same price and contain 7.5 grams of product, Refi 1.5 grams. Jess applies her blush quite high up and out along her cheekbones and that's how I do it too. I love how it lifts the face for a youthful, realistic sun-kissed feel. It's very pigmented so you don't need much and it does have a slightly dewy finish but definitely not as dewy as something like M Cosmetics Color Drops or Rare Beauty's Dewy Blush. That's a separate blush topic I'm planning a video on. Malaya is called a cool, dusty pink with neutral undertones. This is a really refreshing deep pink. It's the shade Jess was applying in that demo on screen. This colour works perfectly with the cream bronzer to perk up your cheeks and give you a realistic, very rosy flush. Citrine is called a rich burnt orange with warm undertones. Jess calls this citrusy blush the colour of the summer. I really like this toasted tangerine tone, but I do find it's too orange if I'm wearing the Refi bronzer as well, so I love wearing this on its own instead. I like to apply cream blush with my fingertips, quickly patting or tapping with my middle and ring finger. Refai does have a jewel ended brush with a dense small end for blush, but my favourite cream blush brush is the Colourpop F5 Small Fluff Brush, an old Harry Makes It Up recommendation that works really well with this formula. Refai's Cream Bronzer is described as having a dewy, velvety finish for a buildable glow. It comes in three shades, which isn't unusual for the industry, but isn't inclusive either, particularly when the deepest shade Onyx is not Onyx more chocolate. Jess said they launched three colours because they're buildable and work on every skin tone, but the deepest would probably read as blush on darker skin. This range has very warm undertones, so they're definitely bronzers, not contour. What's the difference? Contour is about sculpting the face and accentuating natural shadows like the hollows of the cheeks and under the jawline, but bronzer is meant to warm up the face where the sun naturally hits. So your cheekbones, hairline, bridge of the nose. Jess is very generous with it, it looks great on her, but I apply a lot less and it can stay nice and sheer too. I bought the fairest shade Sand, described as a golden bronze with neutral undertones. I knew there was a risk of it reading a bit orange on me, it's not unusual for bronzers to do that when you have cool undertones, but I saw Alana Davison use this shade and I've worn the same bronzer as her before. Before. This is nice and warm, definitely veers into orange territory if I build it too much, but it does apply really nicely in a very subtle way if you don't pick up much product on the brush. The Refai brush is almost like a big buffing brush, so I've been using Refa's 05 brush, a big soft cheek brush that applies this in a subtle way, or an old Real Techniques buffing brush is close to the Refai shape. My usual cream bronzer brush preference is more of a stippling shape. I bought Elf's stipple brush in the US years ago after seeing Alana rave about it so often, or the Colourpop F4 stippling brush is a similar idea in less fluffy form. The brow collection is definitely the highlight of Refai's range for me. It was the starting point for the brand, the best seller, the most interesting and innovative offering. Brow Sculpt in particular made the biggest difference for me and is the one I'd repurchase separately, but I can see why Jess wanted to expand the brand and invite people to capture her super bronzed summery style. Let me know if you've given Refai a try. I'm interested to hear your brow experiences, which stage of the trio is your favourite, or if this was your first time meeting the brand. Would these cream blushes and bronzers make it into your basket, or do you already have something similar at home? Catch you in the comments below. Thanks for watching, see you next time!